السلام علیکم سکردو ٹی وی کے ساتھ میں ہوں منظور امین ناظرین سکردو دارالحکومت ہے سیاحت کے اعتبار سے پورے پاکستان میں مانا جاتا ہے اور انٹرنیشنل ٹوریزم کا بھی ایک ہب مانا جاتا ہے جس میں نیچرل ٹوریزم کے ساتھ ساتھ ایڈونچر ٹوریزم کو بہت زیادہ فروغ مل رہا ہے اور رواں سال متعدد جو ٹریکرس ہیں انہوں نے بلتروں کا وزٹ کیا اور مختلف بلستان کی وادیوں کا رخ کیا اور ان وادیوں کا رخ کرنے میں اس بار ایک یونیک سی بات ایک ایسی ٹریکر کی بھی ہے جو کہ بہت ہی منفرد ہے اور بلتروں کی اور کیٹو بیس کے ہم تک ٹریکنگ کی ایک پہلی داستان رقم ہونے جا رہی ہے جس میں ایک کتا ٹریکر ہے جو کہ اس ٹریکنگ کا حصہ بننے جا رہا ہے اور یہ کتا خصوصاً ایک امریکن کینیڈین ٹورسٹ لے کر آیا ہے اور نہ صرف وہ ٹریک کر رہا ہے بلکہ پہلی دفعہ ایک کتے کی ٹریکنگ ہو رہی ہے اس کے لیے کیسی تیاریاں ان کی ہے اور ایک کتے کو لے کر آنے کا آئیڈیا کیسے تھا اس حوالے سے ہم بات کریں گے ہمارے ساتھ موجود ہیں امریکن کینیڈین ایک جو شہری ہے ہیلو ہاؤ یو فرسٹ آف آل ویلکم ٹو اسکر ڈو تھینک یو سو مچ اینڈ اٹس اے یونیک آئیڈیا دیٹ بفور گوئنگ ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ یور آئیڈیا دیٹ وائی یو ہیو براڈ دس ڈاگ وتھ یو آئی ووڈ لائک ٹو نو اباؤٹ یور سیلف اینڈ دین آئی وانٹ ٹو نو اباؤٹ دا بریٹ آف دس ڈاگ اینڈ دین ٹیل اس دیٹ وائی یو ہیو براڈ دس ڈاگ ٹو اے موسٹ ٹفیسٹ ٹریک آف دا ورلڈ اٹ از کنسیڈر ٹو ٹریک آن بلترو سو ہاؤ دس آئیڈیا کیم ٹو یور مائنڈ Uh, United States Canadian citizenship too. Uh, I spend my time between Boston, Colorado Springs, and San Diego. Um, I love mountain climbing, love trekking. Uh, it's part of the reason why I live in the Colorado area. Um, and um, for my job, I am an explosive canine handler, and my dog here is my canine that I work with. So um, generally speaking, everywhere that we go for work, we travel a lot, he always goes with me. And um, in the United States, Um, whenever we go out to eat to restaurants, whenever we go out to bars, you know, grocery shopping, he's almost always with me because we're always traveling. So, um, you know, we finally got a good chance to take a good long vacation, and I wanted to go somewhere where I could take him along with me and not have to leave him at home. And Pakistan has always been on my list of places I wanted to visit, um, K2 especially. Um, you know, for most of my life, you know, I've been fascinated by mountains and um, climbing, and I've always wanted to go to K2. So... Um, when it came down to it, um, you know, Pakistan was top option for me. And, uh, when it came to doing the K2 trek, um, actually wasn't all that difficult in terms of logistics. Um, uh, we had a couple of companies that we wanted to go with and, um, Trango Adventure was actually our top choice just because they're local based. Um, they use local guides and, um, local employees. And we wanted to make sure that the locals were actually, you know, getting the proceeds from the trek. So, um, We reached out and we got a almost immediate response from Shahid and he said, oh yeah, you know, no problem. We can take the dog. Like he can tag along. And um, after that, it was really just doing research into how to get him into Pakistan, which um, was pretty easy. Um, just, you know, regular vaccines and shots and doing the import paperwork. And we reached out to the um, import quarantine officer in Islamabad and um, talked to him ahead of time. And he got us through the process and it was, you know, pretty easy to get him over here. So. Um, the biggest logistical issue was getting a flight. Yeah. Um, our initial flight that we had booked was with Air Emirates and, um, Emirates, they have, you know, a couple of different policies and they aren't very clear about, you know, how it works on their website. And when we called to clarify, they went back and forth and changed their mind a lot. And, uh, my biggest concern was, um, coming from the United States, like for the original part of the trip, it was going to be total with layovers. 25 26 hours of travel time and um, that's quite a long time and um, I want to make sure that he would be able to use the bathroom would be able to stretch his legs and you know be able to eat and drink you know at least for a portion of it and um, Emirates when we initially booked with them they said he can fly in the cabin from you know Los Angeles or um, San Francisco to Dubai and then we'll have to go cargo from Dubai to Islamabad and I'm like all right you know no problem there you know cargo only a few hours from um Dubai at Islamabad and then we went back and forth and as we got closer and closer to taking off this was you know just up to 10 days ago they were like oh yeah uh, he has to fly cargo the entire way which you know 26 hours without eating drinking or using the bathroom was a huge issue so uh, we ended up rebooking our flight with Turkish Airlines and they allowed him to fly in the cabin from the United States to Istanbul and then uh, from Istanbul he got to fly cargo four and a half hour flight which wasn't that big of a deal 
Okay, you are talking about your journey. So I came to know that uh, you have uh, uh, traveled from Islamabad to Skardu by car. Yep. And how much it was uh, uh, challenging to take a dog with it. And definitely this is a unique idea that you are uh, taking it for trade. But uh, as you are talking about the flights, what were the issues with that or concerns? But uh, definitely taking it in car, that is itself is a challenge. So how did you meet this? Car for him, I mean, we travel a lot for work. So in a typical year, um, flight wise, we'll fly about 80,000 kilometers by air every year, me and him. And then typical year, we'll drive about, you know, 40, 50,000 kilometers. So he does really well in the car. He does really well with, you know, sitting in the car for extended periods of time and not having to go to the bathroom and eat and drink. So um, driving here wasn't that big of an issue. Um, we initially wanted to fly here, but um, Pakistani Airlines, they couldn't confirm cargo until the day of. And we actually got a call yesterday morning, um, early in the morning, saying that they did not have pressurized cargo because um, the cargo hold needs to be pressurized for him to fly for his safety. So when we found out that he couldn't fly cargo, we could either wait in his long bed one more day and then try and fly again on Sunday, or um, we could drive. So I reached out to um, Shahid and said, hey, you know, I'd like to drive. I mean, I, I like driving as it is. Um, driving, you get to stop at certain points and take pictures, and you get to meet the locals and, you know, get to go to the local markets. And um, in my experience, I like to drive and um you know, explore on my own. So, so I think you have been through Naran and Kagan Valley, right? Babu Sartop? Yep, Babu Sartop. Um, and before we left uh, Islamabad, uh, the few days prior, we were actually down in um, uh, Multan. So oh. me and him, we rented a car and we drove by ourselves down in Multan and did some historical sites. And um, I really like driving like by myself. I like to be able to explore and go and meet local people and enjoy local cuisine and, you know, get to be able to do my own stops. And um, I think it's one of the greatest things is um, that's allowed now in Pakistan. They, okay. they so, get rid of uh, I think that coming back towards the trek, which you are going to start soon, maybe yeah. tomorrow or day after tomorrow. So uh, definitely there are certain challenges for human yeah. uh, on Baltar trek because I have been on that trek uh, several times. So I know that what are the challenges for human. And even we can express our pain, our uh, sufferings, but it is really hard for a dog to express that. And it is even in the, uh, really hard for the human to understand their sufferings or their pains. So what are the challenges you think that uh, he could face, Rico can fa face in the trek and how you will uh, sort out or how you will find a solution for that? So my only real concern is gonna be the elevation that we're going to, but um, our prior experience, we live in Colorado, which is about the same elevation as here in Skardu. Um, and then we do a lot of treks, you know, not as high as we're going, but, you know, 3,000, 4,000 meters. So he has experience at um, altitude. Um, I'm not too concerned because dogs in general, um, they're more efficient with their oxygen. Um, the typical human VO2 max, which is our ability to move oxygen and provide our body with oxygen, the typical humans between 70 and 90, I forget what the unit is. And for a dog, it's um, in the high 200s, almost 300s. So dogs are a lot more efficient at moving oxygen. Um, my other big concern is um, Shahid said that the first part of the trek is going to be a little bit more warm and there's not as much shade. Um, so keeping him cool, keeping him hydrated will be our bigger, biggest concern. But in terms of um, doing the trek and going the distance, he's already used to going, you know, um, 10, 15 kilometers a day. And um, his endurance level, I'm not overly concerned about. It's more of the elevation and then, you know, keeping him cool for the first couple of days on the trek. Okay, so uh, best of luck and uh, hope that you will make it uh, history that first time ever in the history that yeah. you are taking a dog on trek. And uh, Rico seems really friendly, but I'm really scared of the dogs. Even then today I'm sitting with here. It's the first time that I'm such near to a dog, but uh, uh, wishing you best of luck for your journey. Okay, you if, if you want to give any message for the tourists who are coming and especially the people who are having pets with them, if you want, you can. Um, the people here are really friendly. Um, don't be afraid of, you know, the name. Uh, it's the biggest thing that a lot of my friends and family said. They're like, oh, Pakistan. And they just they hear the word stand and they think it's a big, scary place. And I'm like, you know, all the research that I've done um, and I have friends over here that live in Lahore and, you know, live in other parts of the country. And um, the people here are very friendly. And from what I gathered from them before I even traveled here is that the people here are very friendly. And I watched a lot of YouTube series, uh, Wildlands by a Bar, very popular uh, motorcycle rider. Um, found out that the people here are very friendly and my experience in the first week of being here in Pakistan is that everybody's very friendly, very welcoming, uh, very kind.
Okay, hope to have some uh, vlogs from your side on the end of this journey. Thank you very much for your time. Nazreen, you have seen thank you very much. And you have seen that the first time you have been trekking here, trekking here, K2 base camp. And this is the first time the Munfarid trek will be able to do the American Canadian country. And with this name, the name of Rico. Inshallah, I hope that the trek will be able to do the trek. And we will continue 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 to do the trek. Thank you.